break into the music industry. A music producer seeking new techniques or someone who simply wants to gain a deeper understanding of the music business, Music with a Twist is the perfect platform for you. Hi and welcome to yet another episode of Music with a Twist and I have with us today Ileana Landon who is actually the director for Megatracks. Ileana, can you let us know a little bit about yourself and what do you do at Megatracks? Sure. So I'm the director of TV, radio, and podcasting uh, for North America for the company. And what that means is I license music um, that is used as background music for film, television, radio, podcasting, digital. But my expertise is in uh, television and in uh, the Latin market in the U.S. as well as in Mexico. Uh, and radio everywhere, really, um, and podcasting, of course. Um, you know, we also have a podcast called Trailblazers, um, where we interview people in the industry. Okay, great. So you sound like you have quite a lot of experience actually working at Megatrax. Can you- I, I do. I, I have. I, it's this August will be twenty-one years at the company. Oh, wow, that's impressive. So can you give us just a gist of, you know, what would be like a behind the scenes stay with you at work, you know, give us a name of some artists or companies that you have worked with? Sure. Just, mm-hmm. Sure. Um, so I work with um, a lot of radio uh, broadcasters, uh, a lot of um, digital uh, companies, specifically in podcasting. So uh, a typical day is is actually like any kind of salesperson. <laughs> um, so I'm also say you know the salesperson for that whole territory that I mentioned, uh, Canada, U.S., and Mexico. And um, so a typical day is is kind of just on the phone a lot or traveling. <laughs> I just came back from literally three back to back conferences. One in Toronto, Canada, which was for radio and podcasters. Um, Another one in San Antonio, which was for the Radio Inc. Hispanic Conference. And then I literally just got in last night from um, a a TV and streaming conference in Mexico. So I travel a lot, I talk to a lot of people. I'm sort of like the the ambassador to Megatracks for, um, for TV, radio and podcasters and basically licensing music um, for um, all of those uh, content creators. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> now, I know in this day and age, you know, we have a lot of content creation, you know, you have a lot of persons sampling and using old content. They're actually making their own content. Absolutely. And, yeah, and with that, you know, we do have issues with copywriting and licensing. So we're going to ask you to help us out with that today. Can you tell us the types of copywriting? Absolutely. Absolutely. So there are different types of copyright. Um, And I I just want to preface that I'm not a lawyer. (laughs) So if you have like real specific questions, you know, things should be consulted, you know, with an attorney specializing in copyright law. But in general, um, there are different types of copyright works in music. One of them is musical works. So this includes melody, harmony, rhythm written down in musical notation or in some form of like recorded form. Um, Then there's also uh, sound recordings. And so these are the actual recordings of the performances of the musical work. So if I'm an artist, then you definitely want to know a little bit more about those. Um, Just some basic rights under copyright. There are reproduction rights, which are the rights to make copies of your work. Um, Distribution rights, the right to distribute copies of your work to the public. Uh, Derivative works, so the right to create new works based on your original music work. Um, And then there's also like public display, the right to display your work publicly, Uh, digital transmissions, uh, which are the right to perform your work publicly via digital transmissions. Um, And then 
what you should do as an artist is also register your copyright. So uh, copyright registration is an example. So while it's an automatic copyright upon the creation of your work, um, it's also recommended uh, specifically in the US. I know you're in the Bahamas, but um, the US Copyright Office, um, they provide legal benefits, including the ability to sue for you know, any kind of damages or attorney fees. Um, there's also international protections by copywriting your music actually with um, a, a legal entity, um, depending on which, you know, in which country you're in. Mm -hmm. um, there's also international protection. So copyright registration in the U.S., for example, also provides protection for you uh, and any artist. Um, in other countries that are members of the international copyright treaties. So like the Berne Convention is an example. Okay, that was, uh, you know, wow, a lot of information. And I like how you said that you're not a lawyer, but you did give just as much information, you know, as if you have a law background. <laughs> well, it, it, it comes with working in the industry, um, you know, for, for yeah. this many years, but, um, but there's also like performing rights. Um, and so the performing rights um, are generally run by uh, performance right organizations that are known as the PROs. And so the PROs um, are things like ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, they all collect and distribute royalties um, for the public performance of an artist's music. Okay, great. So uh, let me give you a scenario. So let's just say if I'm an artist, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to sing a song by Shakira or let's say Rihanna or what a popular artist. How would that go about or how would it look with me, you know, using the copyrights and how can I avoid, you know, any copyright issues or infringements in that case? I mean, I would start and I'm not on the record label side, you know, because what we do is we produce music that is licensed and used by radio, TV, film, any kind of digital um, uh, company. Mm -hmm. But I would always um, be sure and consult, you know, what those laws are specifically as it relates to public performances. It also depends on whether or not you have obtained the right to sing it and put it on an album. So my um, suggestion is to always find out who owns that copyright <laughs> and mm -hmm. ask them for written permission. So whether it's in the written permission of, in the form of, um, uh, in the form of something that's a legal contract where they say, yeah, go ahead. Um, or also, um, you know, especially if it's gonna be a recording. You want to be sure and get the clearance first from whoever owns that. It could be a publishing house. It could be the artist themselves. Um, it could be the record label that owns that. So it's it's not a one solution <laughs> uh, <laughs> of answer, but your best bet is to always obtain that from the copyright uh, owner. Okay, so would it look the same way, you know, if you were using it for a film, like you said, or radio, you know, in your expertise, would it actually look the same or is it a different process altogether? It's, it's very similar, but it's also different because like, for example, the music that we produce, um, so we own that copyright. Um, you can't really use that copyright unless you ask us for it. And it generally comes in the form of a, a, a license. So whether it's that to use one track or to use multiple tracks, say inside a film, um, you, you need to obtain a license from the copyright owner, which in this case would be of course, Megatracks. Okay. Okay, pretty cool. So giving another scenario. Uh, okay, let's say if I'm a video producer uh, and I bring my music producer with me and I'm actually looking into, you know, producing music soundtrack, whether it be uh, in the studio or I'm hiring an orchestra or so forth, 
how would that look, you know, per se, working with Megatrax, you know, am I going to reach out to you guys? What is the whole process? Yeah, well, with our company, we generally require someone to already have film and TV credits because we're very, um, we're very much a company that curates the music, you know, so we make sure that there's a certain level of professionalism, a certain level of uh, credibility in terms of credits. Um, okay. So, so we don't typically get, um, you know, new music from new uh, producers per se. Uh, but, you know, if the music is good, you know, it's definitely worth submitting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So have, are you guys um, interested or looking to work with international clients or are you just a U.S. based company? I know I heard you said that you go to conferences in Canada, you know, um, or is this something that's just kept in the U.S.? You know, do you branch off into Europe? Well, I just want to get a gist of how does it work with you guys at Megatrax? Well, we, um, we ourselves handle um, the international sales from Canada all the way down to Chile and South America. So anything that's North, Central, and South America, we license directly. Um, but we also work with other, um, other organizations outside of those territories um, and um, have representation in Europe, Asia, anywhere in the world really, um, where, um, where we don't do the direct licensing, we always have, you know, a representative. Okay, and the process would pretty much look the same with what you discuss? In terms of what, in terms of licensing? No, in terms of professionalism, you know, our, um, will you look at the amount of years, you know, credibility and such, just wanted to know. Yes, I mean, it, because really anything that we create gets licensed globally. So it, it's basically the same process. And we do that out of here, the US. Um, but in terms of licensing it to, you know, film, television, and other content uh, creators and podcasting and in radio, um, then the process is is the same. It's uh, It's just with a different entity outside of those territories. Um, and um, with our sub publishers. Okay, that's cool. Now I know as of recent, we have seen the rise of a lot of music tech companies, you know, and assisting artists, like you said, persons in film and radio with, you know, getting away from those people who steal their music. How would Megatrax have a play into that? Do you guys have or work along with music fraud companies like BDAP or any other music tech company, you know, that assists with fraud? How do you guys actually work with companies like that with assisting with music protection or is it just licensing? Well, we also protect our rights. Um, so we do work with technology companies that um, track you know, uh, radio, television, film, the internet, um, our music is digitally fingerprinted. So anything that gets copied or gets used without a license, um, we can track that. So, um, so it is, and, and it's not just mega tracks, it's, it's everybody pretty much that is creating, you know, large scale musical um, recordings. Um, it's just a way to protect it. And so, you know, the, the reports that we get are very detailed in terms of, you know, who used it, who produced it, what, when it aired, we get clips of that airing. Um, and so it's really up to us to, um, to basically kind of go after people who are violating our copyrights. Okay, and I noticed that you said something that it affects persons on a large scale, but that also, will those rules, you know, also apply for fraudulent and um, licensing for companies on a, or artists, let's say, or filmmakers on a smaller scale or medium scale? Or is it just that um, Megatrax deals with A to C list companies? Well, I mean, it's really anybody who uses the music illegally. It could be a small producer in Mexico, as an example. And if it's, you know, airing on um, 
on a national uh, or even local level, um, because it is um, digitally fingerprinted, you know, um, the technology companies can scan all of that information mm -hmm. and we can download reports based on that. So it's really at, on any level. And it's not just mega tracks, you know, um, that's how, you know, artists are also going after, um, you know, copyright laws uh, of their works, their musical works. And really, um, you know, all the record labels are doing that too. So like if you're in radio, um, you know, you have a certain license um, because to, to use artists like, you know, Taylor Swift or Kanye West or whomever it is. Um, so, um, so these, these stations um, are allowed to play those because it's in, in theory, you're promoting that artist and their musical work. And hopefully, you know, they're buying, you know, or streaming that person's work. Um, but in the case like of Megatrax, there's really no, uh, no other use for it um, other than to license it. Uh, in terms of like, if you're using our music to promote a product, as an example, um, then and and you didn't obtain a license, it will come back and haunt you eventually. Wow. So it's that serious. All right. So what would you say is like the registration process for licensing yourself? You know, well, step to step. Yeah, absolutely. So, so there are several, um, several things, um, basically registering your music with like ASCAP BMI or CSAC or, or pure music, um, you know, so that they can, uh, collect and distribute royalties from the public performance of your music. Um, I would recommend also, uh, joining a PRO registering with the PRO is essential, for example, uh, for collecting performance royalties from venues, from radio and from streaming services. Um, so you want to make sure that you have, you know, the mechanical license also. So that's needed to reproduce and distribute copies of your, um, of your music. So organizations like, just the Harry Fox agency or somebody else like them, they handle mechanical licensing and royalty collection. Um, digital mechanical royalties is an example in a podcast. Um, and a lot of podcasters don't know this, but if you're using music without a license in a podcast, each download or each stream is considered a mechanical uh, license. And so if you don't have specifically or expressly the rights for podcasting, you could end up with um, a lot of issues <laughs> uh, using the music because every download or every stream is considered one mechanical infringement. So it could really add up. So like if you have, you know, 40,000 downloaders, um, it's 40,000 infringements basically. Um, so you want to make sure that you have digital mechanical uh, royalties, um, you know, so that um, so that you don't get in trouble <laughs> using <laughs> unlicensed music. And then you also need um, synchronization rights. So um, like, for example, um, you know, in a lot of countries, um, they misunderstand copyright law. So so they're they'll be using our music illegally. Uh, saying, well, I'm paying, you know, the PROs for my radio station or I'm paying BMI ASCAP, you know, um, but they didn't get a sync license for us specifically. And so you need a sync license for music like like from companies like Megatrax Production Music, um, because that grants you permission to use the music in movies, TV shows, commercials. And so this is negotiated directly with the media producers through music licensing. So in the case of Megatrax, we license directly, like I said, from uh, North America, Central America, all the way to South America. And then anywhere else, we have other representatives um, that are sub publishers. So um, sync licensing and I would say mechanical licensing are the things that are the most misunderstood. Mm. 
you know, because people violate those <laughs> copyrights all the time without really realizing, but that doesn't make it any better, you know? Um, so we always recommend because we, we host a lot of uh, copyright law webinars um, at Megatrax. Um, so we always recommend like, you know, if you know, like if you hear any information that might say, oh my God, I might be, you know, um, violating copyright law, we always recommend like go directly to the music or the, the copyright owner and obtain that as quickly as possible and just say, you know, like, I made a mistake and and usually people um you know honest people like in in our case when we when we get calls like that um after doing some of these webinar um webinars we just do a license and we say okay you know just pay us this fee for your past use and then if you want to be legal then license going forward you need a, an annual license with us Okay, because I was literally just going to ask you, you know, what is the process of actually registering for sync licensing? I, mm -hmm. I produce my own music with my podcast, so I'm out of the clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, is that all, yeah but is that all that you need to know, you know, with sync licensing and actually avoiding any issues along the lines? Because I know of a lot in our region, especially in the Caribbean, like you say, you know, I would categorize this as actually using a lot of things illegally and not knowing that you can be penalized, penalized for it. Mm -hmm. you know? And I don't know if I'm putting the Caribbean on this spot by saying that, but um, it's, it's good it literally, <laughs> literally, I mean, I would say that the U.S. understands copyright law more just mm -hmm. in general than outside the u.s so i don't think you're alone in the bahamas yeah because it's it's something you know that we need to care more about you know we need more knowledge about and it's great that we have opportunities and spaces like these so thank you so much eliana of course now, <laughs> yes now before we do end i want to know if you'd like to share any more tips or anything uh, about your company, you know, that new persons or middle, you know, career or high end career persons can use with licensing or copyrights, you know, that they can use apart from the sync licensing and the mechanical licensing to assist them with copyright laws and actually protecting themselves, you know, just to cap everything all together. Yeah, absolutely. I think just, you know, in closing, um, understanding the elements, um, if you don't understand copyright law, whether you're an artist or you want to use musical works from somebody else, ask, <laughs> ask someone, you know, yeah. ask the owner, um, you know, so whether it's sync licensing and like you you said, you're an artist and you use your own music for your podcast. I, I applaud that because that means, you know, um, you know, you're not going to get in trouble uh, using your own music. Um, I mean, unless, you know, somebody else hears their, you know, their copyrighted law or their copyrighted um, melody uh, in, t in yours. I mean, that that could technically happen. But yeah. I think understanding the elements of copyright law, it'll help protect your music as an artist, and it'll ensure that you receive um, the compensation that you deserve uh, as an artist. Um, and then always consider consulting with an entertainment lawyer, you know, somebody who understands the law if you're an artist. Um, but on the, on the, on the receiving media end, I would recommend that if you think you're violating copyright law, just go directly to the owner. And, and usually like that'll mean, you know, some sort of resolve. What you don't want is for it to get to a legal, um, into a legal battle because that will get very, very expensive very quickly. Um, you know, hiring lawyers and, and, and putting out the case because 
with today's technology, if you're using music illegally in any kind of media format, it's so easy to get caught now mm -hmm. uh, because of the technology, because, you know, the Internet. So like, you know, if a radio station is using music illegally, that'll be tracked, you know, and it'll eventually if they don't catch you this month or next month, it might catch you three years from now. And if you accumulate, you know, thousands of uses of illegally licensed music, it could end up in the millions. Oh, wow. Wow. That's crazy. Because oh. violations are, are very serious uh, violations under international law. Mm, wow. And you wouldn't think that something like that, you know, is actually real, you know, and it actually happens. I have so many stories in my mind that I can, you know, speak about. But we will end right there. Of and course. I want to thank you so much, Ileana, for your knowledge. You know, I'm sure that everyone, including myself, has learned a little bit about copyright laws today. And we will conduct ourselves accordingly. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And, it, and if anybody has any questions directly, they can always email me. And sure. it's ilandon, I L A N D as in dog, O N at megatracks.com and the website is megatracks.com. Okay, great. And thank you so much for that. We do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's lovely meeting you, even if it's, I mean, I love technology because when else could we have had the opportunity to bump in, into each other unless we were at the same convention or trade show, right? Right. <laughs> technology is so advanced these days. Yeah, it's a pleasure meeting you. And yeah. thank you so much. Yes, it was a pleasure meeting you as well, Ileana. Take care. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to tune into our podcast so you never miss out on an episode. We'll be releasing new interviews every month packed with exclusive insights and behind the scenes stories that will inspire and inform. Join the conversation by leaving comments and questions below each video or by reaching out to us on social media. If you'd also like to be a feature on one of our future podcasts, be sure to reach out. We value your input and want to create a community where you all can learn from each other. Music with a Twist is your backstage pass to music industry. So grab your favorite headphones, turn up the volume, and get ready to be inspired by the captivating stories and expert advance of our incredible guests. Thank you for joining us today. And remember, the world of music is waiting for you with a twist.